It's my pleasure to introduce our today's expert, Dr. Meeladri Shekhar Dash. Yes. He's a professor and head, Linguistic Research Unit, Indian Statistical Institute, Kolkata. He works in the areas of corpus linguistics and language technology, language documentation and digitization, computational lexicography, computer-assisted language teaching, digital ethnography, and uh, the amnesia of bilingual aphasic patients. Professor Das is an international visiting fellow of the British Academy, United Kingdom, is a visiting, visiting research scientist of the Uni University of Reading, United Kingdom, and visiting scholar of the Language and Brain Laboratory, University of Oxford, United Kingdom. To his credit, Professor Dash has published 18 research books and 280 plus research papers in international and national journals, anthologies and conference proceedings. He has also delivered academic lectures in more than 50 universities and institutions in India and abroad. With this brief introduction, I now invite Dr. Niladri Shekhar Dash to deliver the lecture on the topic language corpus and machine translation. I warmly welcome you, sir. Thank you very much. So past the formalities, I'm really happy to be back into NTM to give my uh, expertise or my uh, uh, ex experiences in the area of working in corpus, language corpus, and utilizing this language corpus for machine translation purposes. And I express my sincere thanks to the entire NTM team, as well as CIL Mysore, the director and the in charge of different, different schools or different departments for giving me this opportunity. So today, this would be more or less a technical talk Certain things would be known to you because as it has been already Tariq and a lot of people know or that it's a two week intensive uh, training program. So I was feeling too weak to see that it is a two week program. Then I found that it is not basically intensive. It is also an extensive because a lot of diverse issues are being covered in this area. So here. Our story would be something like this. The whole process here. Is something like that that at the end one end we have got a language corpus which is called the feeder we call it feeder and there is an empty system machine translation system which to to whom we call a holy child so our basic target is to extract information from language corpus systematize the information in the language corpus in such a way that anybody who is interested to develop empty system can utilize this language data, language information, or whatever required from this corpus. Since I have got more than 60 slides, I won't be able to complete those slides in details, but I have to skip certain things. But those who are interested can also look, go through the slides or can share it. I don't have any problem. So the first question is, what it is what we have we have come across the concept of language corpus several times in the last two weeks so you might be wondering what is that that language corpus technically language corpus is a different name or different definition i won't go into detail the basic purpose is language corpus is a huge amount of language data either in spoken form or in speech form as the text form and having those features like it's a natural text samples normally digitized, processed, customized, usage-based, is a representative sample of a particular language or variety. It's a very good resource for trial of the systems and tools, very good for testing of various hypotheses, good for doing experiments, and good for developing tools, systems, resources, whatever is required. So in sum, this is the what is a language corpus. So language corpus here, can have two components. I'm giving an example that you can see that a language corpus can have an image with it and a text. So I've collected it from some websites. I'm showing you that this is sample where there is an image part as well as there is a text part. So we are actually interested into the text, but not the image part. For the time being, we would remove the image and have the text itself. So this is an example of slightly processed 
example of cycle processed uh, uh, corpus where you can find out that every sentence is separated and marked with unique sentence ID. So normally when we develop a corpus, we do identify the number of sentences used in the text and assign a specific value or specific uh, ID for each sentence so that further processing, further access, further all kinds of annotations and retrieval of information becomes useful for us. Now here, this is an example of post annotator. The first one was the raw text and here you can find out that this is a uh, uh, just a minute. Yes, this is an example of post annotated example where every sentence and every word in the sentence is annotated at the parts of speech level. Having a well-defined parts of this dog annotations guideline and the mechanism, I'm not going to grieve into that. But point is that this we do for our purposes that every sentence is annotated at the parts of speech level. Now the blueprint of machine translation where we actually start. What we are trying to do here, we're trying to do is that this is called the reception empty system and generation you can find out that in this diagram there are a lot of issues are actually involved into it so this is a blueprint of the translation system it shows that there are a lot of issues actually involved then the middle is the empty system which does a lot of processing and my emphasis is here that processing involves a lot of things like analysis interpretation trial testing training experiment verification and a lot of issues so this is basically a blue chart of doing an empty system and this can be entirely supervised a lot of human intervention as winston has stated that his inter empty system has has a lot of manual intervention or it can have semi-supervised partial intervention by the human translator or maybe totally unsupervised now the different approaches to machine translation since i won't go into details this particular slide because in last two weeks we have heard about various methods starting from rule-based rule based having some different direct transfer interlingual to knowledge based to hybrid to corpus based and corpus based has now at least broad three domains like one is called example based one is statistical based one is neural based i won't go neural based translation system already we addressed today by winston so my process would be that i'll be emphasizing keeping in mind that example based approaches statistical based approaches and neural based approaches all should be supported and fed with the corpus so my purpose would be how to utilize corpus in all kinds of empty systems development what does the corpus contribute to empty system why corpus is considered to be very important for us it's a very pertinent question almost everybody wants to know that why we should go for a corpus now this is the diagram it shows that if you look at the language corpus, what does it provide? It provides not only sentence, grammar, word, meaning, discourse, and extra linguistics. The empty system asks for sentence, asks for meaning, asks for uses, asks for extra linguistics, and all those things are actually carried to the text areas. So you can find out that why a empty system is so much dependent on language corpus, because the basic components that are very much important for an empty system are actually provided by language corpus so whatever the system now being developed or whatever the advancement the standard of a particular empty system would be the basic thing is that that particular system is here really heavily loaded with information retrieved from computer corpus now there are important issues language corpus and bi-directional empty system if you look at that empty system so far we have come across that normally it says about unidirectional empty system that is from the source language to target language now we have also keep into mind that it is not the, all the time this is the game it can be also bidirectional and if this is a bidirectional system what are the important things you have to take into account that if it is a bidirectional empty system, the corpus that we need, it should be invariably bidirectional and bilingual, language A and language B. And in, in that particular interface, both the languages can be treated as source language as well as target language. And the important information that would be retrieved by a system 
are these like data information rule grammar examples and exceptions so all those things are actually provided by the corpus for bidirectional empty system now if you shift from bidirectional to corpus to multilingual or unidirectional now i've talked about the bidirectional where a b are having the system both are being benefited with the system now we are talking about a multilingual corpus and multilingual and unidirectional system actually that we have worked on it you can find out that here the system is working in an unidirectional mode there is only one particular source language and the source language has a large amount of corpus data and the system is ut utilizing all kinds of linguistic information or data that it can retrieve from a corpus and trying to translate that particular text into multiple languages say target language one to four or many so most of the european languages have now multidirectional and multilingual system for us in india so far whatever the sur for service we have, uh, success we have received are either from english to may some of the indian languages or from some of the particularly the hindi to some of the other indian languages so this actually fits into the frame where we consider English or Hindi as the source language and translate texts into multiple Indian languages. Now here, think of a situation, particularly in Indian context, we have a network where we want a multilingual empty system and it is a multidirectional empty system. So think or imagine the amount of complexities actually involved in this kind of scheme so we need a multilingual empty system which will use say for us four different languages are included here language a language b language T, C, or language d all are working in this scheme as a source language and target language and we have corpus in four different ways so this is a very complex process where you can find out that our system actually trying to translate text from many languages to many languages either in a sequential order or in parallel fashion and this this kind of system heavily depend on the linguistic resources on the systems or the programs or the algorithms that are developed and how the system can manage or handle data and information as such in the whole process. And corpus becomes an in, uh, essential component for that. Now here, I'm giving a very general idea that corpus text types and an empty system. Now, this gives a very interesting understanding of the whole process. The percentage of text translated by empty system at present is just 1% with the total amount of the text being produced globally. Now, if you look at that, that only 1% success so far or 1% of the total text being produced digitally are being translated by empty system and 99% of text are still not translated what is the problem then what is the problem the problem is one of the major areas is basically the text area now if you look at the text types i have given a more simplified pattern that the text which you produce can broadly can be divided into poetic text and prose texts again prose text can be imaginative text or informative text informative text can be technique non-technical or technical technical text can be non-domainized domainized Dominized text is maybe general or specific. Specific text can be non-processed and processed. And processed text can be decontextualized and contextualized. If you look at the empty system, our present empty system succeeds when it is fed with that it a contextualized, processed, specific, dominized, technical, informative, prose text. Can you understand the loopholes and understand the limitations? So we are miles to go before we can think that we have developed a system which can address, can deal with all kinds of texts produced by a living language community. That dreamland are still missing for us. Now, 
we have already mentioned or Winston also already mentioned in our earlier talk is that why a parallel translation corpus is best for MT. So MT system asks for a parallel translation corpus. Uh, we're talking about parallel as well as translation corpus because it has a lot of similarities, textual proximity, thematic, structural, lexical, semantic, topical, discourse level, temporal, contextual, and mutual intelligibility. So because of those important factors, we always go for parallel translation corpus. And parallel translation corpus is the best resource for developing a corpus-based empty system. Now, there is also speech-to-speech -speech corpus of empty system. I won't go into details because I have got very limited number, amount of time. I'm, I'm sharing these slides with others who are interested can go through it. Now, scholars who are actually engaged in this whole team, how many, which people are actually working in us? So we have got language corpus and what end uh, at one end and other end there is a computer technology and for the language corpus we have linguists lexicographers grammarians and subject experts who are involved in language data analysis and providing rule systems and other necessary form information for the system and there are computer experts mathematicians statisticians and technical experts who are working in the pad so those who are coming from the background from computer science, you can find out that if you explore this area, you can have a role to play in the empty system development. Or those who are coming from the background of linguistics, they can also think that they can contribute in the whole scheme of uh, translations mechanism or translation scenario that is being carried out across the country now. What do we require to develop a CV system? That is corpus based system requires basic things. What is that? bilingual parallel translation corpus must then we need some empty support tools not the system we need some diverse lexical resources exhaustive grammatical rules excellent data processing systems trial and testing databases so these are the mandatory or essential requirements for developing empty system how do parallel corpus stand in the empty system it says see look at that the structure is something like that the translators actually produce the parallel corpus which is benchmark data and this benchmark data is trained into the system and system pre-processing stage also uses this knowledge resource generation and the text other text also raw text also pre-processed and algorithms were generated and also there are stages of post-processing then the translation mechanism works so you can find out that there are two ways to do or do carry out the work we can use the parallel corpus as well as the other raw text to develop the pre-processing and algorithms and post-processing mechanism by which we can do the translation task. So the three prime phases of CBMT system, first phase is data analysis, second phase data processing, and third, third phase is target generation. Target generation means target text generation. Here that we have to collect data, cleaning, pre-processing, visualization of the text. We have to do the data processing like tokenization, parsing, splitting, and alignment kinds of text. And then we have to do some kind of training part as well as testing part. I'm very sorry that each term here we have used is basically a loaded term. It carries a lot of information lot of ideas and also we need to explain a lot of things into it how tokenization being done how parsing is done how splitting sentence is done how text alignment are done so all those things which are done in a system cannot be explained here within a short time just please keep bear with me and just keep in mind that each one can be explored further and can be discussed further if required now the three sequential stages of cbmt here you can find out that there is a training phase there is a trial phase and the theory translation phase. So first, we do some use some corpus for training purposes and do model development, alignment, and alignment corpus development. Then we do some linguistic knowledge generation part, operation decoding and encoding, and then translation knowledge generation. And finally, we use the source text and target text. So there are three important stages in translation part. Now, primary challenges related to corpus development. These are the very important issues which I have, we have faced in our life or in our uh, in our scheme when we are trying to do it. First one was bilingual parallel translation corpus generation, normalization of this corpus, alignment of parallel texts, validation of translation parallelism, analysis of texts for data extraction, extraction of possible translational equivalents, rules for lexical, phrasal, and syntactic mapping, 
training MT system with translation equivalence lenses and running MT system on new sets of data and upgrading the stage of matching algorithm. So there are basically 10 important stages for us, which you need to follow while we are trying to develop this kind of system. Now, generation of parallel transfer. So I'm giving you, I'm taking this slide from a book from Alt Altenberg and Eismar in 2002. It shows that if you have an English text and a parallel translation in a Bengali text, then you can actually having, and a Bengali text is translation in English, Bengali, uh, sorry, English text is translation in Bengali text, then you can have four alternatives that one English text and is Bengali translation and a Bengali text and English translation. Now, this interface has given us a unique uh, interface for us to identify a lot of important issues related to two languages here. You get a comparable by the by bilingual corpus between A and C, two bilingual bidirectional translation corpus between A and B and C and D, comparable source and translated text in two languages A and B, C and B, comparable translated text in two languages A C and B D. So there are a lot of uh, cross comparison into the corpus, and that gives a lot of in, advantages to us to identify the conceptual equivalence as well as uh, technical equivalence or translational equivalence in the scheme. Now, similarities observed in bilingual parallel translation, but we have, we have emphasized that we should always go for bilingual parallel translation corpus. So what are the similarities we get? We can get four levels of similarities. One is domain, content, text, and context, which are both in A and B. Then you can have topical similarity. Then we can have <coughs> textual, that is character, section, paragraph, or sentence level similarity. And we can got structural similarity. So bilingual parallel corpus put us in a way far more advantageous position. <coughs> because once the parallel corpus is de developed, we can achieve so many levels of similarities and closeness and proximity between the two corpora and becomes tremendously useful in developing translation mechanism or translation devices. Here is an example. You can find out that content equivalence from our bilingual parallel corpus. This is taken from our uh, ILCA corpus, which we have developed for translation purposes. Now you can find out that medical text, if you look at that, that Hindi text and Bengali text, you can find out that JOR, they are same, they are medical text. Text type, the healthcare, in cases of also it's healthcare. Text content is basically exercise, text content is exercise, and text form prescription, text form is prescription. So you put these two texts side by side, you can very easily identify that so many things are being equivalent in both the K texts. Developing a good algorithm for translation purposes becomes an easy task through proper linguistic analysis and implementation of the programs. Here's an, another example, content equivalence between the news text, media text, particularly jaw news text, text type political, text content election, and text form report. So you can find out that a lot of contextual, uh, thematic, and structural equivalence are actually preserved in bilingual parallel translation corpus. Now, once the bilingual corpora are associated problems are come, we have to keep these things that the four important things that becomes very difficult for us. One is acquisition. Acquisition of parallel corpora is not very easy task because comparable corpora are available, parallel corpora is available, but bilingual parallel translation corpora is a very costly proposition. You need a lot of spend a lot of time to develop things. So there are four major issues that we have faced: acquisition of corpus, conversion of the corpus of different origins and formats into a processed version, so that machine can utilize or understand this cleaning up of the corpus and synchronization of data. See, corpora must align to identify corresponding sections in language in questions, maybe English and Hindi or Hindi to Bengali. So a lot of four major issues are actually very important in cases of uh, developing a bilingual corpus for alignment and for translation purposes. Now here you can give an example I have given a syntactic parallelism in Hindi Bengali corpus, you can find out. Each sentence in Hindi and each sentence in Bangla translation are actually aligned with unique sentential ID. So this becomes a very powerful input for the system to identify what kind of lexical items are used 
and which can be the most equivalent, most appropriate, or most relevant translational conceptual equivalence for the two languages. You can read the Hindi sentence as well as Bangla sentence to find out that this parallel translation corpus has already done a lot of things for the system to do it in a very systematic way or many easier way. Now here, alignment in parallel text in bilingual parallel translation corpus, this is a very important issue for alignment. So alignment can be two broad types for us. There are two issues. This is one is called structural alignment, another is called content alignment. In cases of structural alignment, you can notice here that source text and target text has to align at the lexical level, at the phrase level, at the syntactic level. If you are really interested to produce a expected or proper translation. So this can be done to a certain level by a system. But with regard to content alignment is the real challenge for us. Most of the cases, textual alignment and information alignment can be done to a certain level, but aligning at the sense level is the toughest task for us. So structural alignment we can easily do by certain algorithms, by certain system or rules, but Content alignment is a very difficult task for us. If time permits, then I can show you some examples also how we did the translation alignment task. Now, the level of accuracy in text alignment. What kind of a level of accuracy we are assuming? That broadly, there are three levels of alignment. That high level of accuracy is possible between those two languages, which are very typologically or genealogically language related, like Bengali, Odia, or Hindi, Urdu can have a high level of accuracy if it is a parallel translation corpus available. Medium level accuracy, typologically near languages, say Hindi, Bengali, Tamil, Malayalam, but low level of accuracy is possible in typologically distant languages like English, Hindi, or Tamil, Bengali. So developing a good translation system between Odia, Bengali, or Hindi, Urdu would not create much problem for us if there is a lot of similarities between the two languages, but we can have more problem in cases of languages which has less level of accuracy or <clears throat> in, in the level of text alignment. Now, alignment of translatable units, another important component in machine translations or bilingual text, that we are trying to align translatable units. What is the basic concept of translatable units? It says that those units which are going to be translated properly in the target language. So starting from the source language to target language is a long journey. You can find out that you can have translatable units, small units, medium units, or large units. Now, large units are considered as chapters, sections, and paragraphs are law, larger units, where level of translation or translatability are less. In cases of medium units, you can have at the sentence level, phrase level, or idiom level. And in cases of smaller units, like a multi word units, words and characters so normally our preference is we want that small level of translational units matching so that alignment so that our system works better but you have to keep in mind that medium and large level units are actually required because the end users are not interested into the small translational units they are more interested in the alignment or the output proper output at the sentence level or at the chapter or section or paragraph level. So different levels of alignment here. I have said the word level, phrase level, and sentence level alignment. What are the examples that said target word, sense text word, or uh, source text and target text had a word, word alignment mechanism. So these are the three broad levels of alignment that we can apply on the text once the text is developed or available for us. Once this alignment is done, we do certain linguistic analysis. Broadly, I'm not going into the further details. Broadly, you can find out that there are six different levels of analysis for us. As a linguist or experts of the particular subject, we have to do kind of analysis, extra linguistic, semantic, morphosyntactic, syntactic, lexical, and morphological. And each level of analysis asks for <coughs> separate specific functions. So you can go into these details. I won't go, 
but you can find out that every level of analysis has a special purpose and that has to be done carefully so that we can provide sufficient in a, in a, in a, in enough data or information to the system for developing good algorithms. The methods are used uh, as linguistic analysis. What are the things, what are the resources we are using? That methods is descriptive morphosyntactic methods, POS analysis method, and shallow syntactic parsing. We are using these three processes for analysis of the texts. And in cases, we use the resources, the guiding resources which are available to us for this, we carrying out these three major different tasks are basically standard grammars, standard dictionaries, and standard morphology. So all those resources are already available in all level of languages, all languages. So these resources are being used to do three different layers of analysis of the texts. Now, what are the objectives and purposes of linguistic analysis? The paired lexical databases, paired term databases, paired phrase databases, paired sentence databases, bilingual dictionaries, and bilingual comprehensive grammars. So these are the basic objectives that we will require to do the task. Now, advantage of analysis is that if we do this analysis, we get several advantages. First advantage is a lot of lexical ambiguity are actually dissolved in the level of analysis. Problems in constituent mapping, the ordering, syntactic mapping or phrasal mapping or constituent mapping or say lexical collocation mapping or local word grouping or mapping, those mapping problems can be settled. Translational correspondences are reconstructed. Structuring or pre-existing translated text can be done. And drafting translations are prepared for testing and translation errors are marked and analyzed. So there are several advantages for analyzing of the bi 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 bilingual parallel translation corpus. Broadly six, but you can add some more different types of problems or advantages while we do the bilingual analysis or bilingual corpus analysis. Here is an example. You can find out that here is a false cognates also found that English words, certain say, ball and Bengali ball or English words, some Bengali words, some Sundays and English, Hindi Sundays or Bengali bow or Odia bow. They are all taken from our corpus, corpora, translation corpora to show you that these are basically a false cognates. False cognates means the terms which are <coughs> structurally same, orthographically same, or having uh, pronunciation same, or uh, orthographic structures are uh, represented in the same way, but actually denoting different senses. So those are false cognates or false friends in translation and identification of false friends and removal of false friends is a very tough challenge in the system and Watson's distribution task also. So we have to identify what are the false cognates or false, uh, cogn uh, false friends in translation systems and to mark them properly. Here we do some kind of lexical mapping before we do uh, provide it to the system, you can find out that mapping can be multidirectional. You can find out that a single word in the source text can have a single word unit for in Bangla equivalent as word and shelter, this so and asra in Bangla. But also a single word can have two word units or single word can have a multi word unit. So you can have keep in mind that a single word can have a single word equivalent two-word equivalent or multi-word equivalent and it can also go in a reverse way. So this is another real challenge which we call the process of lexical mapping in para bilingual parallel translation corpus mostly done by experts and using certain tools to identify what kind of semantic mapping or lexical mapping can be done on the bilingual parallel corpus. Now we also develop a contents of bilingual dictionary made from bilingual parallel corpus. This bilingual dictionary is basically a machine readable dictionary, not for regular user. So there are important 12 components in this machine readable dictionary, which is developed and, and which becomes a very really supporting tool in the whole empty system mechanism that it contains exhaustive pair lexical database. Lexical subcategorization information is also provided. 
lexical distribution information that is very important that how a particular word are actually used in different kinds of contexts in the source text because they're very important clue for appropriate translation lexical selection restrictions information domains of use of lexical items sense variations of lexical items orthographic relations between words morphosyntactic representations grammatical functions lexicographic meaning contextual sense variations and connotative implications of the expressions so these are the five important 12 important domains of information are actually at the added into the uh, uh, by it, that is machine readable dictionary of the system that helps to the tool or MT system to pro get the appropriate information from different domains and capture the original sense of the source text now here you can find out I've given our sample of Hindi bilingual dictionary that we have already developed like you can find out that here category pronoun postposition indeclinables has a Hindi database and their translation equivalents in Bangla and the gloss is also there also there are some other information added into it but this kind of equivalents are already developed with the machine readable dictionary and that provides a unique support to the system in selection of the appropriate terms now database of the uh, parallel dictionary that bilingual dictionary that here we have <coughs> comparable syntactic blocks where phrases and clauses are preserved subcategorized constituent subject object predicate information comparable phrases adverbial adjective idiomatic expressions and subtleties lexical items true translational equivalence named entity this is an important area in cases of translation also identical proper names either in meaning form or in translated form are actually preserved into it and also the anaphoric entities the mostly the pronominal forms so there are separate layers or separate domains within this machine translation dictionary or uh, machine readable dictionary where uh, these informations are actually preserved and marked and linked up so here extraction of translation equivalents from the parallel corpus what how we do that this is a very complex process to be honest that it takes a lot of time to identify the exact translational equivalence from the parallel translation corpus in itself it's a separate research area once you get the source text bilingual parallel translation corpus and lexical operation on uh, bilingual translation operation is done we can find out that there are search for the source text and search for the target text identify the lexical units then examine the form usage and sense this becomes the most complex task for us number stage that we have to examine every lexical item and identify its use its sense and capture it equivalent one from the target also that is target language then match between the two this is another basically done by system matching of the terms then produce a translational equivalent units so these four numbers stage four and the rest two fours are very complex task for the machine to carry identify the two terms in the source text and the target text I actually stand as the conceptual equivalence. Now, pur uh, the purpose of translation units in CBMT that we retrieve that good translation equivalence units, words and collocations, compounds and phrases. And also we know how language corpora help in producing translated text that display the naturalness of the target language. It creates a new translation database also for us which enables translation correctly into languages on which one has limited command and generate terminology data bank as there is hardly any standard term bank for our Indian languages particularly there is a lack huge lack of the terminology database I know some of the languages have developed but for Bangla and many other languages is still lacking and these translational equivalents uh, has developed a large amount of terminology data bank which becomes a very important resource not only for machine translation purposes but it has also many many other applications i'm not going to delve into those areas now how to authenticate the translation and units in monolingual corpus so one more stage is that after we retrieve those data translation and units we also authenticate with our monolingual corpus to see that they are properly distributed or their senses are properly captured and their actual sense in a contextualized frame are actually captured so this is a mechanism we use verification cross verification and validation and finally authentication so that particular authentication stage after this process is completed 
the whole data is shifted to machine-readable dictionary. <coughs> now, selection of lexicon from the bilingual par parallel corpus to CBMT is a four important task. How to select the most appropriate terms? So there are four issues that we have controlled, found. That one is called agent control. I'll give you an example. That selection of lexical is done based on the information linked with the agent that is subject of a sentence. Sometimes it is topic controlled. Sometimes it is context controlled. Sometimes it is broad control, uh, domain control. So theoretically, if you want to have a translational item, which has to be translated in the target language, what would be the best translational equivalence in the target language that has to be theoretically justified by these four agents, that is four controlling factors. I'm giving an example. See here, number one, action is taking food and this is subject controlled. The very important example we have got that the sentence is something like that. Somebody is taking food. If the subject is God, you have the English that God receives food, you have got Bangla translation equivalent, another one, Prasad Grohan Koran, the God. If it's a great man, then you have Bangla has another term. If it's a gentleman, then Bengali has another term. The common man, Bengali has another term. And it's a layman, it has another term. So what I'm trying to say here is that the selection, the same system, but selection of the most appropriate term, term as a translational equivalent are actually controlled by an agent who is the subject of the action. Now look at this. How it is the topic is controlling. Now here you can find out the action is to inform and the equivalent is the Bengali term is gap on. But to English inform, these are the topics and these are the equivalent terms. There is the lexical selection issues with regard to the which is controlled to the topic. Now, if you look at the other one, then here you can find the context dependent controlled. You can look at that. The action is delivery. But if you see that if it is a hospital, delivers a child, then you have a, another different Bangla equivalent. If it is a classroom teaching, then there is a term called deliver, then you have another Bangla equivalent. Or it's a mass rally, and you have a term like deliver. You have a separate one and it's a courier service and daily there is a term like deliver you can have another bangla equivalent and lastly if it's a ticket match and you have say, say that english equivalent that deliver and you have a different bangla term what i'm trying to say here that every time selection of the most appropriate example or equivalent from the target language actually controlled by various factors sometimes the agent sometimes the context sometimes the topic sometimes the domain the last one is the domain control. If you can find out the term, English term inherent. For Bengali, there are five equivalents and this differ because of the major domain. In linguistics, it has another term. In literature, it is another. In biology, it has another. Or philosophy, it is another. Or in rights and rituals, it is another. So this is, these are the very important issues in translation or uh, developing these lexical styles or making lexical con uh, selection in translation. So theoretically, as well as an application point of view, four major domains are actually playing important role in selection of equivalence. Now, dissolving ambiguities in CBA system is an important, hub, an important issue. Now, here is an example. When a husband dies, the wife cries for a second. You can find out that the term second can have referential ambiguity and here you can he that is pronoun or loves his another one is a you can find out this is a lexical ambiguity second one is a referential ambiguity you can find out that he loves his wife this referential ambiguity he and his can be the same person or different persons and if it is a different persons importance or interpretations can vary and there is a syntactic ambiguity the well-known sentence time flies like an arrow you can find out very clearly that what kind of different typical examples of ambiguities are there. The important thing is that our major findings is here. In a simple descriptive text, 30% of words are actually ambiguous. Now, think, if you are trying to develop an empty system and you come across that out of 100 words, 30 words are ambiguous, having multiple interpretations, multiple senses, think the how can, can the amount of load as they are into the system. 
content and function words are equally ambiguous. So far, it has been claimed that content words are more ambiguous than function words or some other report I have already said, uh, I have already noted that says that no, 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 function words. But in our study, we have found that both content words or function words have very equal role in generating ambiguity. <clears throat> in a simple informative text, not about the subjective text or imaginative text. In an informative text, 50% of sentences are ambiguous. And complex sentences are more ambiguous than simple sentences. See, the level of complexities involved in the empty system clearly shows that what are the problems we are going to face. Now, there are various kinds of mapping. We do grammatical, lexical, syntactic, semantic, and discourse level mapping. I'll here you can show you the one small example. All his efforts ended in smoke. This is the input sentence taken. And here the Bangla sentence, Tar Samostichesta Bartholo. You can find out that input sentence, this is the input sentence, and this is the literal output, and this is the actual output. And the problem actually in the red area, red colored characters area, you can find out that we have to do a lot of processing here, merging those things, and get a kind of uh, expected output. So say four, five, six are actually combined together. This is a literal translation. Then you have got a metaphorical translation and I've got the output. So this is the most complex area for our processing and we do a grammatical mapping here. Then we have got a lexical mapping that English word to word to mapping or word to uh, word to word mapping or word to word mapping. You can find out that these the, the same examples are actually given. This is the word mapping then group of words for a single word and use of case markers for prepositions and word to word mapping. So there are all those five, seven or seven items which are there, the six items are actually mapped in that way. Then here you can find out that discourse level mapping mapping is done that ended in smoke is basically an idiomatic expression in English. And in English is a DEF three items has to be is an idiomatic expression. And that has to be combined together into a single expressions like but the whole in Bangla. So this is basically DEF actually generate only one important item, one word for multi-word expressions is a translational or lexical mapping algorithm or output. Then here you can find out sequential mapping algorithm that you have given to the machine that sequence characters here in English input should be treated in sequence like bang, bangla, one, two, two, one, three, four. This is a order of change. I'll show that would be treated in the output result. And here you can find out lexical dependency mapping here. You can find out here that preposition, postposition distribution is a very real problem for us, particularly in Bangla. In English, if you look at the example, in hands are actually represented in Bangla as hati. Means here, it's an infected form is generated. With person, in other is an infected form. Here, by mistake, is basically an adverbial form generated. So every preposition, in English are actually rendered in Bengali in the form of a post positions or uh, mostly post positions or infected form. Here you can find out in hands is an infected form, but in house is basically a word with infected word with a post position. So that kind of complexities are actually there in between the two languages where their complex uh, degree of similarity or proximity is very less between the two languages. Here, the structure and reordering of the sentences. It is in his hand. You can very clearly see that it is these two items are actually combined into one. Number three has been shifted to third position. Number four has come to the second position. And number six has come into the third position. And number three and number six are merged together. So this gives a highly complex ordering of the whole structure and our system that a dummy system that we have developed so far actually works in this way. It identifies those after the analysis of the bilingual parallel corpus, identifies this rewarding. And this rewarding actually helps to develop the algorithm for us. Here. Now the restructuring. See, Hindu dharma mein tirtha ka bada mahatta hai. My Hindi is very as poor as Winston. So please forgive me. <laughs> Now, Hindu Dharma Tirthir Vishesh Guru Ache, if you get this translation, if you want to translate that, 
that can this is the input sentence marked with each mark then you get the literal output then you do a lot of restructuring and you get the actual output when you are doing the hindi to bangla translation mechanism we had to do this bilingual parallel translation corpus to get the actual expected output so a lot of linguistic tasks are actually done into the system now major linguistic challenges have come near to the end maybe within 10 minutes i'll be i'll pack up there are lexical issues syntactic issues semantic issues and sociocultural issues and each one has many subdomains with regard to lexical issues morphological analysis translational equivalence generation lexical mismatch lexical ambiguity lot of lexical gap i have not discussed this one the lexical collocation issues are another important area in translation then <clears throat> source multi word is equal to uh, multi multi word you need single word unit to multi word unit or multi word unit to single word unit then name identity then we have the issue of bilingual dictionary bilingual term so all those issues have been taken care of then syntactic issues the semantic issues and sociocultural issues so broadly four domains are to be taken care of while developing the system now major non linguistic challenges these are all linguistic challenges what are the major non linguistic challenges we are facing now first thing large and topic based parallel translation corpora as very few the only parallel translation corpora that we have developed in ilci project indian language corpora initiative we have got that much and there are some other parallel corpora who developed at the individual level which are mostly not accessible or available to us then before we develop a good translation system we need a lot of language processing tools unfortunately for many of the indian languages we don't have those tools we don't have no good entity uh, parse per part parse of twister tagger say good annotator good parser good translation equivalent generator so there are a lot of tools are required then robust mt devices and methods storage and processing facilities trained human resources that is another important issue that whenever we want to do the task we don't get good enough trained people to work on this area so either we have to get some people and train them through errors or we have to start from the scratch and adequate financial support that i won't discuss this is the perennial issue for us and infrastructural and technical support so these are all non linguistic issues so to get a good translation system it is not that once you solve all the linguistic problems the problem is achieved or the success is achieved not it never happens we need a lot of non linguistic issues are also involved in it and you have to take care of those things then the last slides sorry ha huh? yes i am happy that i can finish in time this is meant as a supporter of cbmt as you have already known from many other earlier lectures as well as from uh, winston's talk today that corpus based approach is not the ultimate state of mt or translation system there have neural network system big database in system and many others new systems are coming up but everywhere the most important part has been that provide us big data that means huge amount of data are required and this data should be processed data normalized data standardized data benchmark data so that the machine becomes robust machine becomes supportive to carry out those tasks unfortunately this kind of data is not yet ready for many of the indian languages including the major languages so as a, as a supporter of uh, corpus based approach or as a supporter of machine translation system of any type i have basic three in disillusionments that and many miles to go before we post before we because you can come across on the net or any different digital platforms i have achieved that i have achieved that i have achieved that same empty system which gives 99% which gives 90 100% all kinds of things you will come across please don't believe these kind of things we have to go many miles and before we go miles to go before we host actually 
put up into the net that okay this is the system is ready so anybody and everybody can use it please don't do that and miles to go before you post now you can miles to go in ultimately you can claim that we have a system we have a tool we have a mechanism which is competent enough customized enough that can serve all translation tasks all translation requirements of the country this is a long cherished dream, but we have not achieved yet. So empty is still a hunting ghost for us. So we have to go many miles before we can come to a conclusion that, okay, certain level of success we have achieved and we can now boast or host the system for others to use it and to serve their purpose of the common people as the time is changing you can know that requirement of translation tool or translation system has been multiplied in thousand ways but the amount of time amount of people amount of fund amount of energy devoted to this area of study is grossly minimized in last 10 years so i don't know when we are going to uh, achieve our success i'm still optimistic that Maybe today or tomorrow, or maybe after some years, we'll be in a position to claim that we have a good empty system. Whatever the mode it may be, whatever the model it may be, I don't have any problem. That this system serves all kinds of linguistic purposes of the countrymen. Thank you very much. Here I end. Thank you very much. And stop sharing, ask, waiting for your questions. Thank you very much, sir. I'm Thank within time. Participants, if you have any questions, you can proceed. We can take one or two questions. Yeah. Yes, somebody has raised hand. Latika Chowda. Sir, namaste. Yes, this is Latika. Uh, sir, we met in Odisha yes, uh, uh, for, uh, you know, Katak. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. Yeah, uh, Raven yes. yes, I, I had a question. Yeah. Uh, because my uh, PhD topic is related to like a bilingual corpus um, generation. Yes. And the most important thing is, sir, you told uh, us linguistic analysis, the topics like. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Uh, but, sir, I have to know that if we have to do translation, we have to do analysis. Translation analysis. So, then, what kind of parameters we consider, kar sakte hai, sir? See, <coughs> now the question is you are trying to do some resource generation for translation purposes. If I'm not mistaken, because your goal is to develop a bilingual parallel translation corpus, right? Yes. Yes. From Gujarati to Hindi. Gujarati to Excellent. Fine. Yes. Now the question is, what is the purpose of your resource? Why you are developing that resource? Huh. Actually, Why it's... you are interested? Yes. Tell me. Huh. It's a uh, bilingual, uh, bilingual corpus of technical terminologies in the specific field. So if you say that bilingual database of technical terminology, not bilingual corpus. So, but I'm making like, uh, I'm giving explanation of all those ter terminologies too. So I'm having yes. two columns. Huh. I understand. I understand. Okay. But ultimately you are developing a database, bilingual yes. database, yes. where the Gujarati text has a translational equivalent in Hindi yes. with full lexical details. Yes. Right. If, if this is so, then you must know very clearly that why you are developing this resource. What are the application possibilities you can visualize? Huh. If you think that that particular resource can be utilized for translation purpose, mm -hmm. then you can add certain layer of information which is necessary for that. Okay. If you think that this can be utilized for language teaching purposes, you can add mm -hmm. some additional information to it. If you think that this can be used by, by the ministry or particular domain of the ministry or some particular specialized people, then also you can add some additional information to that. Yes. So once you know that this is a particular resource being developed for a specific or multiple functions, mm -hmm. then is, it is also known to you what kind of information can be added to that. Sure. So make it says you are developing using a bilingual parallel corpus as your input. Mm -hmm. G. Developing a bilingual lexical database G. where all linguistic and extra linguistic information of every scientific or technical term 
used in the database are provided so mm -hmm. that both manual translator and MT developers mm -hmm. as well as other people relevant to that particular discipline can utilize it for their linguistic and non-linguistic purposes. Yes, definitely. Clear? Gee. Once this mission is clear, you know very well than I do what are the information you are going to state, keep into the database. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Got my point? But be huh. clear, very clear that why yes. you are doing developing this. Okay. So one more thing, I, I want you yeah. this present uh, presentation. <laughs> yeah. You wanted this copy? Ah, yes, PPT or copy of this PPT. The host, host team can provide you or you can, you, me an email. Uh, you can send me an email, I will share you. This is a public property, it's a national property. I am sharing <laughs> for everybody who would be interested, I will be happiest person. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Dhanyavad. Thank you, thank you. Uh, one more question, uh, sir. Uh, Khalid ji. Yeah, Khalid ji. Experts say that the machine-assisted translation can never be accurate. Is this true? Absolutely true. Till, till you are not customizing it. So the basic thing is that we don't think that that a machine can do the kind of translation exactly the way the end user requires. See, when you produce a particular source text, we get, have you come across that a source text in most of them don't carry only one layer of information. It carries multiple layer of information. And if you think that your MT system is going to give only one literal level translation of this source text, then as an end user, I am a loser. It may happen that the source text has multiple readings and my MT system should produce multiple equivalent translations. It is not that I am going to, I'm going to the bank if it is the source text then please it should have at least three different interpretation or translation in my target text that I'm going to a bank means bank of the river. I'm going to the bank means bank of the institutional financial institute. I'm going to the bank means banks is another meaning in uh, say in body language, body language domain. I won't go into the details, but it is possible that you can have multiple different interpretations. The question is, is your MT is giving all possible outputs or not? Most of the time, MT is giving only one interpretation, one reading. So if you say that MT is not 100% successful, I'll be the first hand, first person to catch your hand and help you, support you. Yes, sir, it is. Okay, you have okay, to go, okay. go multiple ways, multiple miles before you can say that, okay, all our requirements are addressed by MT system. We have not come to this stage. We have to go many miles. Thank you, sir. Sneha. Thank you very much, sir. Yes, sir, Sneha and Vishal. <laughs> One more question. Sneha and Vishal Nandanji. Yes. Uh, Please. Yeah, Sneha. Yes, uh, with the kind permission of the Achha, organizers, uh, I would like to ask uh, Professor Nadri. Yes, please go ahead. It is a wonderful lecture. You were so fast. You were giving the theoretical lecture, but I would like to. I would love to see how you are doing things in the process of uh, uh, through the machine and all. You have to demonstrate it. Otherwise, you are giving such a fast lecture. It is difficult for me to understand what you are connecting to what after mm -hmm. one slide to another slide. Could you please demonstrate something uh, through your computer? How you have done that? So and the if you are, you have that, carried out. Yeah, fine, fine. Is that that is the thing? The point is that uh, since it was basically, uh, I prepared some PPT for this type of talk. And since it has a very complex nature in our uh, in the whole process, I would rather ask you to come to my department so that I can sit before you with my lab, with my team, and show you how our system actually working. Because rather than developing the empty system. We are developing the resources, processing the bilingual corpora and utilizing those resources for MT input because our work are basically providing the linguistic data and information for developing the tool. The computer science department in our institute are developing the tool. We are processing the data, linguistic data and what are the data processing tasks we have done that I can share with you 
and because these are funded by some government projects it becomes very difficult for me to make it publicly available so if you are interested please come to my department i invite you i'll share with you and show you in my department lab how things are going on okay i'm very sorry because this side the certain things i cannot share on the public platform i'm not permitted sneha uh, yes, yes sir so basically the question is uh, when we are dealing with the corpora mm -hmm. and uh, majorly the corpora is uh, containing the words from one particular language only and when we are uh, translating the whole text there are instances where the uh, word from different language it also occurs so mm -hmm. how does the machine translation deals with that i believe yes. this is going to be a elaborate uh, one but if you can yeah. just give a hint See, about it uh, uh, the first proposition that you have taken is basically not the right proposition i have told that we have used the bilingual parallel translation corpus which is already been developed we have in our ilca project we have already developed a bilingual parallel translation corpus once you have a bilingual parallel translation corpus at your hand many of the things are more more simplified because the level of similarity index between the source text and target text are already separate because it is manually translated now making these resources applicable in a empty system what are the things we need to do on this bilingual parallel translation corpus i have tried to discuss here in brief because for last 5 years we have been working in this area how to process a bilingual parallel translation corpus how to retrieve necessary information linguistic and extra linguistic information so that our system can be more empowered with appropriate linguistic knowledge for translation task and what are the alignment technology alignment tools methods we would be applying what are the uh, analysis part we have to do what are the ordering part we have to do these are the issues which have been emphasized here so once you have a bilingual parallel corpus but the first proposition that you have said that once you take an in sentence you translate into another sentence that becomes what kind of lexical choice what kind of syntactic choice you will make in translation that's it have far more open question and when a human translator do this what are the factors actually work behind it that is a separate area of investigation i won't go into that i know what are the factors actually work but since in this talk i have tried to emphasize only on the bilingual parallel translation corpus which is developed which is available for us in a digital platform how we analyze them process them and extract extract information for developing translation support tools and resources for machine readable dictionary got my point yes sir thank you very much thanks sir thank you very much sir it was very nice hearing you dear participants before proposing a formal vote of thanks there's an announcement regarding a special lecture today we will be having a lecture on travel through translation by dr anuradha kanned lanti at 2 pm uh, as we have already shared the poster kindly rejoin with the same link thank you now i request my colleague uh, dr sandeep to propose a formal vote of thanks sandeep thank you very much sir uh, for this wonderful lecture i hope this has enhanced our participants and uh, given some ideas on technical aspects of machine translation thank you sir uh, for this valuable time thank you very much thank you very much i can leave now and my with my best wishes thank you sir take care bye bye, bye sir thank you participants kindly switch on your video sir